Welcome to Science Access. In today's class, we'll be talking about the phylum Annelida, and we'll be following this outline. Introduction to the phylum Annelida. We'll talk about their characteristics. We'll also talk about their classification or the classification of the phylum Annelida. Where we'll talk about the class Olikaita. We'll talk about the class Oligokaita, and the last class, the Hyrodinia. We will now discuss the earthworm as a representative of the phylum Annelida. When the word annelid is mentioned, what comes to your mind? Earthworm and leech and some freshwater species. However, annelid comprise of more than 15,000 species and two-thirds of these are actually marine worm of the class Polychaeta. Annelids are regarded as segmented worm because their body is divided into segment or ring. This segment is actually regarded as the metamer or sumite. These similar segments are actually arranged in a linear series marked externally or differentiated externally by a circular ring termed annuli. Internally, segments are demarcated by the septa. Again, note that segmentation is the division of the body into a series of segments. Each segment has similar constituents and possess the main organ system of the body. Note that the annelid belongs to a superphylum termed Lophotrosozoa. Examples of the annelids include the parchment worms, the clam worms, plum worms, scale worms, log worms, and numerous others. Let's talk about the characteristics of annelids. As you can see from the diagram, their body is actually segmented and they are bilaterally symmetrical. That means that they can be cut into two equal halves, which are mirror image of each other, through only one plane. They possess true body cavity regarded as the colon or U colon, and their body possess a type of skeleton regarded as hydrostatic skeleton. Their digestive system is complete. Take a look at the diagram. They have both the mouth and the anus, so they possess two openings to the external environment. This means that their digestive system is complete. Note that gaseous exchange in this organism is actually through gills, the skin, or the parapodia. What type of circulatory system do they possess? They possess a closed circulatory system. A closed circulatory system actually means that their blood is confined within the vessels of the body, just like in human being. Our blood is always within the vessel, always circulatory within the vessel, and the heart is actually the one pumping the blood and always flow through the vessel and back to the heart. This process is actually continuously repeated. Respiratory pigment in analyt include the hemoglobin and chlorochlorine. The term respiratory pigment means the molecule or compound in the body that actually helps to transport oxygen that is taken in during breathing in. Respiratory pigment help to transport the oxygen around the body of the annelid. Take a look at this diagram. The body wall possesses both inner longitudinal muscle and outer circular muscle layer. And their nervous system comprises of a double ventral nerve cord. Their brain is a pair of dorsal cerebral ganglia. This is connected to the ventral nerve cord. Note that they possess various sensory systems such as the taste bud, the tartar organ, statocyst, as well as the photoreceptor cells. Some members of the annelid are hermaphroditic, while others actually possess separate sexes. It should be noted that they possess the trochosphore larva. Note that asexual reproduction in annelids actually occur through the process of budding. Let's now discuss classification of the phylum Annelida. The three classes of the phylum Annelida include the class Polychaeta, the class Oligochaeta, as well as the class Erudinia. Classification in Annelida is based on presence or absence of the Sita, the Parapodia, which is a fin like projection or appendages, as well as the presence or absence of the Clitellum. Let's talk about the class Polychaeta. Polychaeta is actually the largest class of the phylum Annelida, comprised of more than 10,000 species. They are majorly marine animals. As you can see from the diagram, some may be brightly colored and others may be dull in color. Note that Polychaeta are differentiated from other groups because they possess a well-developed differentiated head with specialized sense organs and pair appendages termed parapodia. They possess numerous city arranged in border in the parapodia. It should be noted that the polychaeta lack clitellum. Of all the annelids, polychaeta actually possess the most vivid differentiation of the body segment as well as specialization of the sense organ. 
Polychaeta are generally divided into two, the errant or the free-moving polychaeta and the sedentary form which spend most of their life in burrows or two. Examples of polychaeta include the clamworms, the ragworms, the logworms, the bloodworms, the sea mice and others. Let's talk about the second class, termed oligochaeta. Oligochaeta contain more than 3,000 species of which the most common is actually the popular earthworm. Majority of oligochites actually inhabit either the freshwater or the terrestrial environment. However, there are few marine species or even estuarine species. Oligochites possess chitellum and city but lack the parapodia. Examples of the oligochites include the earthworm, scientifically termed lubricus terrestris, we have the tubifex, stylaria, and others. The last class of the phylum Annelida is the class Herodinia. They are commonly termed a niche and they inhabit freshwater predominantly. Though there are few marine species, as you can see from the diagram, leech are dosovetrally flattened and show a variety of colors. Many are carnivorous, while others may be parasitic. Note that leech are actually hermaphroditic and possess lithellum, which produce cocoon for the reception of eggs. They have lost their city which oligochates utilize for locomotion and they have developed suckers for attachment while sucking blood. They are regarded as the vampire of the annelid world because of their blood sucking tendency. Let's discuss earthworm as a representative of the phylum annelida. Earthworm is the most familiar oligochate which grow in moist rich soil emerging at night to exploit the environment. Lubricus terrestris is the most commonly studied earthworm. Let's take a look at the features of earthworm. They are cylindrical in shape as you can see from the dagger and their body is bilaterally symmetrical. This means that they can be caught into two equal halves through one plane. They are tripoblastic and their body layer comprises of the ectoderm, the mesoderm and the endoderm. Note that the outer layer of the body is covered with cortical. They possess true colon or they have colomic cavity, as you can see from the diagram. A fleshy postuma hangs over the mouth of the earthworm. Let's discuss locomotion in earthworm. They actually carry out the peristatic movement where the anterior part move forward and then followed by the posterior part. This movement is controlled by the muscles of the body and they possess hydrostatic skeleton. Let's talk about nutrition in earthworm. Nearly all oligochates are scavengers and earthworm feed primarily on bits of leaf and vegetables, decaying organic matter, animal matter, and refuge. Secretions from the mat actually help to moisten the food particles and this is sucked up by the muscular pharynx. Prostomia actually help to manipulate the food. Note that the food that is sucked up by the muscular pharynx is temporarily stored in the crop before it's taken to the gizzard where it's actually grinded into pieces. Digestion and absorption take place in the intestine of the earthworm. Chloragogen tissues in the intestine actually act as a center for synthesis of glycogen and fat. Note that this process is an anabolic process where smaller molecules such as glucose is used to synthesize larger molecules such as glycogen and fat. Now, chloragogen cells are released into the body or into the colon from the chloragogen tissues. These chloragogen cells are termed ileocytes. Undigested food are passed out through the anus. Earthworm carry out excretion with the use of nephridia, while respiration or gaseous exchange in earthworm is carried out with the use of their moist skin. Circulatory system in earthworm is closed and it comprises of the pumping organ which perform the function of a true heart and various vessels. While their nervous system comprises of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, as you know the central nervous system comprises of the brain which has a pair of ganglia. They also possess various sense organs such as the photoreceptors, chemoreceptors, as well as the mechanoreceptors. Let's discuss reproduction in earthworm. Earthworm are hermaphroditic, possessing both male and female organs in the same organism. In lubricant species, reproductive system is found in segment 9 to 15, and the male reproductive system comprises of the testes and the dot. Spermatozoa are produced in the testes and matured in the seminal vesicle. They are transported through the sperm dot to the genital pore in segment 15, while the ovum or the egg is produced in the ovaries and emptied into the colomic cavity. 
They are transported to the genital pore in segment 14. It should be noted that though earthworms are hermaphroditic, they do not self-fertilize. Cross-fertilization occurs between two earthworms and egg is produced. Note that slithylum produce mucus which join the two earthworms together during copulation. This is the end of this lecture. Please subscribe to support this channel. Thank you.